Hey guys, Deanne Taylor here. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the new enhanced mobile experience for Dynamics 365 field service, which is currently in preview. And there's a lot of new things here. We're gonna have a new user interface. We're gonna have new views, new forms, etc. I'm gonna tell you all about it right after this. So before I show you some of the really cool things that are part of this new mobile experience for Dynamics 365 field service, I'm first going to show you how you can enable this preview feature, right? So this is a little strange. I thought this would be in the field service app, but apparently you need to turn this on from the field service mobile app. So you can see here, I'm actually accessing the field service mobile app through a browser. And then what you want to do is you want to switch the area from field service to settings. And you can see here, we have features here. This is the booking maps that's currently already there. And then below the preview are all of those preview features that you can enable. And this is the one that we wanna enable. This is that new mobile experience for Dynamics 365 field service. And you can see there's a couple of other ones as well, Copilot for new mobile experience and then Copilot Recap for mobile, and that's for the unified interface. I'm actually gonna do videos on both of these a little bit later, but this video, we're really gonna focus on the new mobile experience for field service. So once you've done that, you'll actually get a notification that will tell you that the app will be published automatically, and then it just takes a couple of minutes before the new mobile experience is actually available in field service mobile. So there are a couple of limitations with this preview that I wanted to mention. So for example, I noticed that if you actually enable this preview and then use the field service mobile app for Windows, then you're gonna be not very happy because this currently doesn't seem to be working for the field service mobile app for Windows. Um, I haven't tried it on Android because I actually have uh, an iPhone, but it is working on iPhone and I'm assuming it's also working for Android phones as well. The other thing I wanted to mention is dashboards don't seem to be working in this new experience. I actually had one of my dashboards set as the first page and it didn't even load the app correctly. I got a whole bunch of code, couldn't reload the app, it just kept crashing. So make sure that first of all, you don't have, let me actually scroll back here to kind of show you, you don't have your dashboards here set to be loading as the first page, because again, that just keeps crashing. And then if you are trying to access dashboards, you'll also know that the app will actually then crash. So make sure that you're not trying to access those. Microsoft is aware of that and I'm assuming they're gonna fix that, but this is currently the way that it is. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that offline mode is not supported during this preview phase, but I'm pretty confident, right, that this is most likely going to be added prior to GA. And then you're gonna see me also open, right, a booking. So you'll also see the new booking form. And if you're trying to figure out how to configure that booking form or which booking form is used in that new interface, then you, you can stop right now because Microsoft actually mentions in one of the articles that customizations and configurations for this new form are not yet available during this preview. So if you need to navigate back to the classic interface, right, the classic form, so to speak, then you have the option to do so. Now, since we kind of went over all of those limitations, let's now dive into the new experience in the field service mobile app. Okay, so let's just go ahead and bring up field service here. 
And you'll notice that this is that bookings view, that new booking agenda that loads as soon as you log into the application. And obviously you can navigate back to this also by just clicking the home button, right? So if I would go somewhere else and then at some point in time I wanna go back to this bookings agenda, I can go ahead and do that by just clicking this home button over here. Now, obviously the name kind of reveals it already, right? This shows all the scheduled bookings for the logged in resource, so me uh, currently. And I, I really like how the days on the agenda, agenda view have these thick right bars here. So here we have tomorrow. It's kind of hard to see maybe, but this looks a little bit grayed out. Tomorrow, Tuesday, January 9th, and then I scroll up and then I have here January 10th as well, but I can also see that the current date is today, right? And that is that blue border that we have. So it's very easy to kind of see the date that we're in, right? Then you can also see that the status field is pre pretty prominent as well, right? You can kind of see here that this is actually scheduled. This is in dark blue, but we can see that directly. It kind of pops on the screen together with that date um, as well. And the other thing that I wanted to mention here is that you can actually go and scroll down as you can see, right? And that brings me to January, the end of January, February, etc. So I'm going to be able to actually look at future bookings up to 90 days in the future. And I'm also going to be able to look at past bookings. And those are also going to be up to 90 days uh, in the past then, right, as well. So that's 180 days worth of bookings. If you have anything that's older or further out than 180 days, then obviously you're not going to be able to uh, to see that. But I thought this was uh, this was really, really cool to be able to uh, kind of review all of that, right, directly from within here. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show here is you can see that we have this little icon over here. That's the directions icon. And I really like this because when I click on this, let me just go ahead and do that. It's actually going to ask me, do you also want to update the status of that booking to traveling before you open the map? So if I do that, if I do click on update and open map, let's just go ahead and do that. You're going to see the use Google Maps or the use Apple Maps. So I can actually choose which one I want to use. So I'm going to do Apple Maps. And now it's just going to map right to that location, that service location. And then I click here on directions, which will then load those directions for me. Right. So that's a very easy thing that we already saw in the previous uh, in the previous field service mobile app as well. But we didn't see that it will then update that traveling status for us. Right. So that's really, really cool. Now, the other thing that is is nice here is that I can just click here on the little ellipse here. There's three dots, so I can do that. And then I can edit the status. I can also get the directions from here, or I can view the details. And viewing the details is nothing more than just opening that booking. So let's go ahead and do that. And as we're doing that, now you can see that we have a very simplified form right here. So we see the general uh, tab up top. We have tasks, we have products, we have services, and we have the timeline as well. But what I noticed is that you can really see a slimmed down version of that form, right? We have some details that are read only that are related to the work order. So my incident type, my work order type, my service address, my contact, and then here my summary as well. But I cannot update those, right? So I can click, try to click on those fields, but nothing will ever happen because they're read only currently. And then you can see here, this one actually has an asset. So it's also showing me information regarding that asset. And then I have some information regarding the booking itself as well, right? So we see here the status as well. And if I click here on the traveling 
right? On that traveling status, you can see that this is going to allow me to edit that booking status. And the same thing goes for my start time, arrival time, end time, and my duration as well. And then, of course, you can see the big edit status button here on the bottom of the screen as well, which is going to allow me to, again, update that status. So if I click on tasks, this is really showing me a list of all of the service tasks that are related to this work order, right? So above that task list, you notice that it actually shows a bar with the total number of service tasks and the progress of those tasks as well. So I can see how many have been completed, right? If I go and check my arrival check-in, then I can see one out of three has been completed. And you also see that green bar up top there as well. And then if I need to add another task, I can do that with that add task button that you see uh, in the bottom there as well. When we go to products, you can write again, very refreshed look here. Again, I can just go ahead and I can just start marking them off. How many did I use? Oops. It's now, as you can see, if I drill into that, it's actually going back to the legacy interface, right? So let's just uncheck this here for a second, but that's kind of how very quickly we can start to update those products and consume those products as well, right? And then again, right, when I click here on add product, this is just going to take me to that legacy, legacy form, allowing me to create additional work order products as well. And then of course, if I drill into that, so for example, if I wanted to see the details of that air filter replacement, I can click on that. And again, that just takes me back to that legacy form for those work order products. Services, very similar, right? Here are my work order services. I can add services. I can consume these services as well. So this is all very similar to one another. And then lastly, we also have the timeline. And this is going to allow us to very quickly add notes, right? You can see here the add note button. So if I click on that, I can actually put a title in there. So I can say image, and then I can also right take a photo or choose a photo from the library. So let's just go ahead and take a photo here of my keyboard. Right, I can say I'm going to use that photo. And there you go. And then I can put some notes in there as well. Let me just go ahead and save that. Now, it is important to understand that when these field technicians create these notes, this is actually related to the booking and not to the work order, right? So keep that in mind. You're creating these notes for the booking, not for the work order. All right. Now, this is not everything. I'm actually going to go back here to my bookings and then I'm going to click on more. And then I'm going to go and go to this booking list that you see up top there. So I'm going to click on that. So besides the form that I just showed you and the agenda view that I showed you as well, we also have some new mobile views. And it's, it's actually pretty nice because you can configure these mobile views to uh, really be optimized, right? So you can see here that the icons have been removed from the views. But another thing that's kind of cool, and you can kind of see that in here, right? I have one, two, three, four, five uh, different columns that are actually visible now on this view. And if you're looking at the legacy views, then you know that we only had three columns. So this is going to make it a lot easier for us to get more information when we're navigating to the different table views. Now it is important to understand that for most of these views, let me actually show you another one. So if I look for work orders, right, here's my work order view. And if I go to accounts, here's my accounts view, right? Um, we can actually right also sort depending on the fields that are available. And then you can see here account name, it's descending. If I want to click on that, it changes that to ascending. But the thing that's I feel is kind of missing here is the ability for me to change views. So I cannot pick 
a different account view, for example, in here, right? So that's something that I'm hoping that they're going to bring back. Now, this is, again, something that you actually, you can actually configure today, the different columns and the filtering on these different views. And I, I kind of want to explain that to you a little bit. So by default, when you're navigating to any of those tables, it's always going to load the default view for that table as long as that view is also added to the field service mobile app, right? Now, if there's no default view for that table that you're trying to access, then the first view configured for that table will load instead, right? So keep that in mind. Now, when we're talking about bookings, let me go back here. When we're talking about bookings, this, the rules that I just mentioned are a little bit different for the bookings table because there's actually a new view that's called bookings dash agenda view and that's the view that you're looking at over here right so if you want to configure that if you want to add some columns there if you want to go and do some filtering there then make sure that you're using that bookings dash agenda view right below that bookings table or bookable resource bookings table is what i should say the other thing that I wanted to mention here that is that if you have um, other bookings in the system that are not related to a work order, then they are going to show up in this list, but they're going to look like blanks. So that looked really, really weird. Um, I just had a couple of blank lines in my booking list view. So make sure that you actually add a filter right to this agenda view so that you're not getting those records in this particular view. So after testing out this new Dynamics 365 field service mobile experience, I have to say I really like this new interface. It seems like there's a lot less clutter. We're smarter with our screen real estate, and that obviously also makes it a lot easier for those field technicians to navigate as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks for watching. Until next time.